Hi everyone, welcome to another new video. Today we are tackling another debate as to whether or not facial oils are good for you. Uh, there's a disagreement out there in the skincare community. There are proponents of face oils and there are people who say oils are bad for you. So I wanna dive into why the proponents encourage you to use oils, why the um, anti-oilers are against you using oils, and hopefully at the end of this video, as always, I wanna provide you with the education to be able to understand what the topic is about and that way you know what's best for you without anyone telling you what's best for you without actually knowing your personal skincare concerns and needs. Before I get started, I would encourage you to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. I would also encourage you to go onto my website and subscribe. I'm doing newsletters now which involve um, some blogging that I'm doing and also when there are sales from these expensive skincare brands that we often talk about like Skin Better Science and Elastin, I'll always let you guys know if they're having a special or a promotion. I frequently get messages from you asking me if they ever have sales, if they ever give discounts, and occasionally they do, and so you'll be the first to know if you sign up for my newsletter. Before we get into the discussion of uh, the spectrum of hydrators to oils, I'm gonna start off with other ingredients that we use on the skin to create a natural balance in the skin where the skin naturally knows to produce the right amount of oil, to have an intact healthy skin barrier, how we encourage natural balance and hydration in the skin. And the way that's done is through products like ceramides, Retin-A, or vitamin A derivatives, retinols, and they are just broadly beneficial for uh, balance in the skin by increasing collagen production, reducing hyperactivity of melanocytes, so improving hyperpigmentation. They also control oil production and balance that out. Niacinamide also balances oil production a little bit. So these are ingredients we can use in our skin that encourage our skin to have a healthy, optimal balance on its own. We often combine these ingredients with additional hydration because our skin is dry and so we need to apply more and that depends on whether we are sensitive, dry, normal combination or oily. So now moving into that spectrum of hydrators to oils, starting off with hydrators, they are substances that pull water. So they can pull it from deeper layers of your skin to the surface, or they can, and or they can also pull it from ambient air. A popular one people talk about is hyaluronic acid. Another one is um, silver mushroom extract. There are various humectants that basically draw water to the surface of the skin. The second category would include emollients, and these are substances like fats, oils, silicones, and if they're chemically derived, things like propylene glycol serve as emollients. And they essentially produce a skin barrier, so they help prevent the water within the skin from escaping to the outside world. Emollients essentially strengthen the skin barrier by acting like a skin barrier because they get absorbed in between the cells of the stratum corneum. You have that layer of dead skin cells. And if you imagine a brick and mortar, they function as the mortar that helps seal in moisture in between the cells. So that's how they function, but it's important to remember they are not actual humectants or moisturizers. They don't add moisture to your skin. They simply prevent water and moisture from escaping from your skin. Now, if you've ever wondered why some hydrators that are non-oil based hydrators do have some oil or fat type ingredients in them, it's because in certain formulations, a small am amount of oil or fat will boost the, the efficacy of the hydration in the formulation. So in other words, they enhance the function of the hydrating properties in the specific product. 
Lastly, we have occlusives. These are substances like Vaseline or Aquaphor. They do not absorb into our skin. They sit on top of our skin and they prevent two things. They prevent hydration and water in the skin from evaporating out and they prevent the insult of the outside world from harming or accessing or irritating our skin. So they act as a physical barrier between our skin and the outside world. So for example, this was a very commonly used when people were wearing the N95 masks and they wanted to protect the skin. Um, a lot of time, an application of an occlusive would help protect the skin from the moisture of you know breathing out into the mask all that humidity and also the physical insult of the pressure on the skin from the mask now let's get into the different skin types normal healthy skin does produce a balanced amount of oil so that our skin locks in its own hydration and that strengthens the skin barrier and we naturally prevent water loss from our skin through transepidermal water loss into the environment. People who have very dry skin don't produce enough oil, therefore their skin barrier can be more fragile, more sensitive, and they will lose water through transepidermal water loss. So in individuals who have very dry skin, applying a very thin small film of oil can actually help retain moisture in the skin and prevent it from escaping out into the environment. Now, if skin is combination or oily or T-zone and oil is applied to that skin, that can wreak havoc long-term because the T-zone or the oily skin is already overproducing oil. You don't need any more oil. Your problem is that you have too much oil and it's causing congestion and breakouts and texture irregularity to the skin. This type of skin that gets more oil applied to it is not going to develop a healthy natural balance. In fact, the oil applied to the skin is going to cause the skin more confusion, more imbalance. The cells won't talk to one another in a healthy way, telling each other, we need more hydration, we need less oil. They are just overwhelmed with this oil that's applied externally. And in the long run, it just causes so much imbalance and texture, and it does not improve the skin at all. So as always, it's really dependent not only on the individual, but also on the climate. If you live in Hawaii, for instance, or a nice humid climate where there's so much ambient water in the humidity of the air, there's really no necessity for oils because there's no reason to trap anything inside the skin because the skin is constantly fed moisture from the environment. If you live in a very dry, harsh climate or you have very dry winters, then you need to protect the skin and you can do that with either oils or even occlusives in freezing cold, dry climates. Applying an occlusive like Vaseline before you go outside, it adds that extra protection. It's almost like, you know, when you bundled up, bundle up to go outside, putting an occlusive on your skin is almost like putting a little sweater on your face that, that will protect your skin from really harsh climates. So it depends on the skin, it depends on the climate, really depends on the individual. But as long as you understand that if your skin is already producing oil, if you're having blackheads, if you're having enlarged pores, adding oil to your skin is not going to benefit your skin. Your skin's already got a problem with overproduction of oil and adding more will cause more imbalance in the skin trying to find a, a healthy equilibrium. Whereas if you have very dry skin, your skin is on your face then is more similar to the periorbital or neck area in most individuals because these areas don't produce a lot of oil. They have very tiny pores. That's why we usually add more oils to eye creams and neck creams because these areas require more hydration, more uh, strengthening of the skin barrier and protection of transepidermal water loss. So individuals that have very dry skin and not much oil production 
can benefit from adding a small amount of oil to their skin because that will compensate for the lack of oil that their skin is naturally producing. So in an ideal skin regimen, the first thing you want to do is encourage your skin to have its own natural healthy balance. You would do that through um, retinoid products, niacinamide, strength strengthening the skin barrier with ceramides, um, adding antioxidants, vitamin C. These types of things help the skin regulate itself. And after that, it's very individual and climate and situation dependent. And that's why we oftentimes change our skincare from wintertime to summertime because the ambient moisture and humidity changes. And so we have to make adjustments for that in our skincare. If you're very dry and using retinols and other ingredients that attempt to balance the skin still leaves you dry, then you absolutely want to use humectants because water is the most important thing that we need in our skin. But the oils may help you reduce your transepidermal water loss. In other words, the evaporation of water from the skin. So using a small amount of oily or oil-based hydrators will just help you create that thin film of protection and strengthening of the skin barrier that will prevent the evaporation. But if you're oily, if you have a T-zone, adding oil to that just confuses the skin. It thinks it's moisturized. It thinks it's producing the right amount of oil, whereas it's actually overproducing oil. And it just dysregulates the entire skin system and causes texture and you just won't be happy in the long run. This can be tricky to figure out, but it's always trial and error. If you know your skin is dry or oily, that's your starting point. And after that, you try various products and you see. But ideally, you want your skin to produce its own oil in the correct amount, and you don't wanna over apply oils to confuse your skin to think it's producing the right amount and cause imbalance. If you guys have any additional questions, please leave them down in the comments and I will get back to you and I'll see you guys in my next video.